record. Okay, this is the last subtopic, guys, about the applications, the yeah? electrolysis and application. I'm sure during your school days, you have learned about the few of the basic application, such as the electroplating, uh, purification of metals, and of course, uh, extractions of metal itself. Those are the applications of what we say, uh, the application of electrolysis in the different fields. But you, uh, by end of this chapter, uh, uh, this subtopic, you should know, you should know the components, sorry, you should know the components, operations, and electro, uh, of, of an electrolytic sum and predict the product based on the electrolysis, the standard potentials value. And finally, you need to know about the extractions of the aluminum from its oxide. It's a, just an application, just a basic one. I'm sure this will be a very quick one because uh, just a basic applications. Remember guys, it, you always remember in the, when we are, whenever we are talking about electrolytic cell, it comes with a few basic components. Of course, you must have electrode. Electrode is, as I have told you in the very, very beginning of the chapter, is a substance that can conduct electricity due to the presence of, a, sorry, it can conduct electricity. Uh, it is a conductor, basically. You have an anode, you have a cathode, you must have a battery, you must have an electrolyte. Electrolyte is a substance that can conduct electricity due to the presence of a free moving ions. Due to the presence of a free moving ion. Those are the main thing yeah, that you need to know about it. Main component of an electrolytic cell. So this is how it's look like. <coughs> so, Without further ado, so remember, there is a difference between electrolytic cell and a galvanic cell, or voltaic cell, we call it here, yeah? especially the cathode, and, and, and not cathode is different because it is a different due to the, the energy changes. Over here is actually electric change to chemical. Okay, over here is actually chemical change to electric. Okay, and you know that's this the reason why the anode and cathode change as well. And you know this is non-spontaneous and the spontaneous. I have explained this in my previous video, and they do have the similarity whereby both can undergo a redox reactions. Okay the ions flow and everything is still the same. So few things affected affecting the product of the electrolysis. Remember, they are factors. Factor number one, the standard electrode. The electrode that we use very much determine the product that it's going to form. It's going to form. Okay? Imagine uh, descriptions, eh? let's say the more positive this one, the easier the species to reduce at the cathode. Imagine, my dear student, you have this thing. You have a system of copper iron, silver iron, and water, of course, over here. So the species, look at here, we have three different species. So which one will be the one undergo uh, reduce? So the one, when you have three value, the one that will going to reduce gonna be silver because it is the most positive in this case, okay? And the more negative uh, this value, easier to undergo oxidize. Imagine you have a three species over here, okay? Which one will become easier to uh, species to oxidize? Oxidize and anode. So the answer is gonna be the, the, more, the more negative value. Of course, over here all is positive, but remember 
if the all is negative, we go for the less positive one. So in this case, iodine is the one will be the best candidate. Okay. So second factor gonna be concentration. Second factor will be concentration. In our previous video, we have go through in detail about this concept. So the more concentrated iron easily will be discharged. So please take note so you can have a look this explanation for your kind reference. It's the same thing. I have told this in the mind previous video. So next one will be the nature of the electrode itself. Remember choosing electrode. As I told you, you have two types of electrode, active electrode, inner electrode. Active electrode and inner electrode, you will choose. Remember, uh, uh, active electrode is the electrode itself involved in the electrolysis process. In an electrode such as platinum and carbon doesn't involve in the electro, uh, electrolysis. So please keep in the mind of this process. And of course, more examples. This is about the molten salt, molten salt, whereby this is where certain country, certain country, they use a molten salt. NaCl uh, liquid eh, without the aqueous in order to abstract, extract the pure sodium salt and chlorine gas. So from this one, they do get a Na solid and the Cl2 gases. So the overall, this is what happens. Eh? And so nothing much. Some electrolysis, uh, always keep in mind, electrolysis, the cation with most positive, this one will reduce at the cation. Oxidize at anode, the most negative value, anion. So always remember, red cat and ox, this is how you should memorize this thing. Red cat and ox. Okay. Quite simple. They give you some example, ask us to predict what will be the things. So you have given this thing, these two things, predict a mixture of this and this. Okay, almost the same, almost the same. So Br ion is at, uh, at, attracted. Okay, this is nothing much a problem because both of the sample have a Br. So it doesn't have much argument, argument. But the argument comes in for the cathode part. Why? Because you have two cations, two different cations. So the question, which one you will choose? So you have these two, you will choose the more positive is discharge. More positive over here gonna be aluminium. So it gonna form a solid aluminium. A solid aluminium. You get it? Uh, yes, you get yes. it? Okay, good. So some checkpoint you can have a look later. House. Need some more? Thank you. <clears throat> so this is another application. They are doing the electrolysis with the aqueous solution. I think this is a very common. What is the purpose of doing this in order to get end of the electrolysis? You will get the oxygen gas and also the hydrogen gas. Okay. So a very common things you have learned. You can calculate. So electrolysis of aqueous solutions. So again, guys, you need to look at the value. Please yeah? look at the value 
from based on the SRP table. From that table, you determine which one become the cathode and which one will become the end node, the cat, uh, reduction and oxidation eh? based on the value. So this is, you need to base on the value, potential value, you can determine oxidation and reductions species accordingly. Uh, just an example, you can have a look, nothing much. They use a platinum electrode. Uh, what is the difference between this one and this one is going to be diluted system. A diluted system. Okay, good. So just, I think by now, if you understand the electrolysis, the redox, the reaction of E cell notch, this is quite easy. Please turn to my previous uh, videos. If you miss my, my lectures, I already compiled everything. More example, what is the difference between this and this? It is B2. One is constant diluted. The other one is concentrated. So both, uh, for your information, both will result a different product. Both will result a different product. For diluted, it's an oxygen and hydrogen gas. If we are talking of for a concentrated system, it's gonna be, look at that, it's change. It becomes chlorine and hydrogen gas. You need to pre-identify which species actually undergo charge and discharge. based on the potential, cell potential value. So some examples, you can have a look. It's going to be the same. You just need to be concerned about the product that form. You need to worry a bit if it involves a combination of elements. Like this one, you have a two different species. So which one to choose? Choose the one less positive. If you have like this, choose the one less negative. It's always the less, Le either less positive or less negative. That's it. That is how you solve the entire problem. Okay, of course, we have some checkpoints. You can have a look. And more applications. This is actually uh, extractions of aluminium from bauxite. Eh? Box, uh, this one is actually the ore, the ores of the aluminium. Or the other name is actually aluminium oxide. So when you have aluminium oxide, the bauxite, you are preferred to have the aluminium Okay, of course, we want the pure aluminium. We don't want aluminium oxide. That is waste. We want the aluminium. So, of course, you put it into this for, uh, a very big, uh, as a molten bottle of furnace, we call it. And of course, it do have a negative anode. And we do have the positive, uh, this one, anode. Okay, you, you have the positive terminal and negative terminal. So the, the electrolysis will start to take place and it attracted to each other. Finally, you will get a pure, pure aluminium will be collected at the bottom. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. Okay, so nothing much. Economic consideration of aluminium extraction. This is why we are doing the extractions by using the electrolysis is because more cost effective. Of course we want, because we want to save cost, but still extracting aluminium is expensive because it is huge amount of electricity. Imagine you want to do the extraction, you need to use a lot of energy but it's still 
reasonable. It's still reasonable, okay? So material cost is constantly replacing by, and not those are the reasons. Lah. So I think ah, this is the last part of the chapter. So Shamimi, stop.